Well, there was a couple decades in the 1960s and 70s when historians said that if we just study presidents, if we just study leaders in Washington, we don't really get a feel uh, for what happened in this country or for how it happened. So they started to look at America from the bottom up, grassroots movements, what's life like uh, in ordinary uh, homes, and uh, looking at family and looking at community. And, and then when I went to graduate school, uh, myself and others wanted to study political leaders again and government institutions, but to do it in a context to understand what was the relationship between Washington and what was going on in the rest of America. How did ideas matter? Uh, how did things like money and politics matter? And so we tried to broaden the scope of what it meant to study political history in response to the critics. Uh, and since then, we've had a lot of success in putting forth good work, uh, good ideas, and introducing people to new ways of thinking about politics. The, the biggest just surprise material was about the years between 1967 and 68, and I was trying to understand how did conservatives regain power in Washington. And I thought I'd be reading primarily about Vietnam, about race, but when I was in the Lyndon Johnson Library, I found all these documents uh, that really had to do with the budget, with deficits, uh, with inflation, the kind of issues you hear about today. And I learned that's really how conservatives helped to rebuild themselves, talking about austerity, talking about the need to contain spending, and that's how they put Lyndon Johnson on the ropes. Um, the part of the research in this book that really changed my perspective was listening to Lyndon Johnson and hearing him talk about the limits of presidential power. And really, it shifted how I wrote about this book, rather than just being about what Lyndon Johnson was able to do and how he could do things that no one else could accomplish. I learned that it was really the context of his presidency that was what was interesting. Why was there a moment when someone like Lyndon Johnson had an opportunity to succeed? And I learned that in part by listening to him talk about the limits of presidential power. I think he always knew this, and it comes from being in Congress for decades. Uh, he was someone who loved Congress as an institution, who believed the life of a legislator was incredibly important and valuable to the nation, and he had seen from a very young age just the kind of problems Congress could cause for presidents. One of his first big memories is the late 30s, 1937 and 38, when he's just elected to the House, and he saw this conservative coalition of Southern Democrats and Republicans stifle Franklin Roosevelt just a year after he had been elected in this landslide victory. He never forgot that lesson. So when he started his presidency, he was not uh, uh, expecting much. And he understood just how tough the fight would be to get all these bills through. So I think he knew it from the start. I think he feels even worse by the time it ends, really understanding uh, just how much power can be drained from that institution. Well, certainly we can see that in uh, President Obama's earliest part of his presidency, when he had a Democratic Congress, uh, and right after people were still enthused about the first election, he got a lot done. Uh, so there's a similarity between the mid-years of Johnson's presidency 64 and 65, and Obama's first years, because in fact they were pretty productive. We got health care, we have financial regulation, we got an economic stimulus bill. Uh, those are big, big items. Uh, but then we see that once Congress turned against him in 2010, uh, President Obama was not quite so powerful. And again, we can look back to the Johnson years to see how when Congress turned on Johnson in the 66 midterms, he too. Uh, was less, less effective. The other big difference, though, is that in the 60s, there was a very vibrant, organized, liberal movement. Uh, civil rights, unions, religious leaders, they were mobilized at the grassroots to create pressure. They were also mobilized in Washington to push for legislation. President Obama, even with the coalition that elected him, hasn't enjoyed that. And there's been much more of a disconnect uh, with the grassroots, and I think that's hurt him.
I think in President Obama's case, uh, the, the grassroots has really worked against him. I, I think after his election, he's had trouble maintaining a connection uh, with some of the organizations and the activists who helped bring him into office. And they haven't, frankly, been as robust as what we saw in the 60s, whereas the conservatives have been very organized and they've been very sophisticated, they've been very consistent uh, and aggressive, and I think they have connected with congressional Republicans to stifle him almost at every turn since 2010. Well, one lesson that you get from this period uh, is that even Lyndon Johnson wasn't the Lyndon Johnson we remember, and that even Lyndon Johnson depended on a lot to succeed. He needed a Congress that was going to be able to pass all this legislation. And the two things that happened in his presidency, which are essential to understand, uh, the first is just the impact that the civil rights movement had, not just on the nation, but on Congress. It changed congressional opinion, it mobilized, it created unbearable pressure to get the legislation through. Uh, and so activists had a big impact, and we have to remember that lesson. The second is the election of 1964, where voters made a difference. They created huge liberal majorities that lasted for about two years, uh, but they were the reason, these majorities, that so much legislation passed. So one big lesson is that we can't simply look for presidents to remake the playing field, to do what the last president couldn't do. We have to think about how citizens themselves uh, can ultimately change the tenor of Washington. The second related lesson is that those opportunities are very quick. Uh, Johnson pushed frenetically for legislation because he understood that Congress and conservatives in Congress would eventually return to power. And that's exactly what happened. Within a couple of years, the status quo uh, reemerged and congressional, uh, congressional conservatives really were able to check him. So he used his window well. Uh, and the third final lesson is that even though these periods are short, when a lot gets done in Washington, they can last. And so much of the great society from these years remains intact, even after decades of conservative politics.